Hi, this is John Russo, and you're listening to the Movie Raid Show. It's time for the Movie Raid. Tonight's victim is screenwriter and author John A. Russo that has been involved in movies such works such as George Romero's Night of the Living Dead as well as Return of the Living Dead, amongst many others. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Fantastic. Now, you've been working on some a lot of projects recently. Can you uh, discuss a little bit of that? Anything that you want to promote or anything that we can check out or you've been pretty much up and up on other things? Well, I have a movie that I wrote, it's almost done shooting in California, and it's called The Night They Came Home. And it's not a zombie movie, it's a western horror story based on real life. In 1895, the Rufus Buck gang, five teenagers, went on a rampage of rape and murder, and they were caught after 19 days, as I said, and they were all hanged at the same time on the gallows at Fort Smith, Arkansas. The gallows that was built to hang up to 12 men at once, being produced by Patrick Durham in California, shot there. And, he, and so I didn't direct it, I just wrote the script and the novel. But in the meantime, I continued to do things for shooting uh, Uncle John say. Christmas, which is a follow-up to My Uncle John Was a Zombie, and later we're going to do Uncle John Finds Love. So, you know, that's a successful movie in terms of being a crowd pleaser and getting good reviews for everything in it, and except the distributor, which is typical of nowadays, they don't do anything. And it's tough to get reports and money out of them, too, which I knew would happen, and it did. Do you feel that there has to be a right time to write a certain genre of a story to fit with that so called uh, algorithm? No. You have to write what you believe in and I don't write just horror obviously. I write the things that interest me about concerning what's going on in society but whether it's a horror film or a straight drama or what it has to have timeliness and you know some kind of significance culturally or, or in, in terms of our society or history or whatever. It has to have a theme that, that people are interested in. And oftentimes when you do write they usually do it because there's a trend going on because this horror film or this action film is doing well, this? Well, people try to jump on trends. That's probably the wrong thing to do. People do things like that. A lot of people that don't have the imagination or the insight that they think they do or ought to have, they copy other people's work or they jump on trends. The only trend that I jump on is trying to understand what intrigues people now. If there's a special problem going on now that needs attention and serious attention, you know, whether it's a lampoon or a realistic work of art, whatever it is, of course, it has to interest people. So you have to be attuned to what people are interested in. And sometimes you can guide their in. You know, you can expose something that they ought to be thinking about and but haven't maybe gotten into it so much. Just like if you write a, which I did do, I wrote a song about global warming. It's on my YouTube channel. It's called Eve of Destruction 2020. It's very good. One version sung by me, one by Chuck Corbin. So I wrote that song because I think it's a serious problem and it ought to be getting attention and something needs to be done about it or else there won't be any human beings anymore. Writing and finalizing a piece, piece of work regardless of what, what genre it is, should that artist still gain some kind of a creative control regardless of how that story is, is going to be used, replaced? Well, one, one thing that I've thought for years ought to happen is that the way writers are dealt with on Broadway or in, in terms of stage plays ought to be the same way that the studios treat writers. In other words, if, if you are the person that wrote the original play, you are the person that gets to do the rewrites, if any. And so the writer always has a voice in that state, and the production itself continues to put forth the, the point of view of the original original writer. What happens in movies is that they oftentimes buy something because they like it a lot and they think it's good and then they start losing faith in it and they hire one writer after another and the thing ends up totally bastardized and is neither fish nor fowl and then it fails as a result and then guess who gets blamed? The writer or the director blames the studio and the studio blames the director. Nobody takes blame. Everybody's anxious to take credit even if they don't deserve the full credit but when it comes to a flop nobody wants to take credit or blame and they push it off on everyone else within the indie film how do you actually get that out of that phase even though it's an indie work still in today's society still having to be distributed would they actually stay stuck 
in today's indie trying to get the work out there or i mean is there other process that you feel that they need to jump out there to be known it's the same battle it's always the same battle whether it's a novel or a movie or what you know the first battle is raising the money to get it and the next battle is the money to get it promoted well and that's where most projects fall down you know when hollywood does a movie they usually spend 10 times more on promotion than they spent to make the movie and that's kind of the rule of thumb if they make a 10 million dollar movie they spend 100 million promoting it and so on that's the way it goes independents generally are lucky to have just enough money to make the movie and then the distributor doesn't put forth the money to promote it or the person the investor that put the money in the production runs out of money or runs out of patience or loses the interest to promote the movie and then the movie goes out there and it's a losing battle. No matter what kind of movie you make, it doesn't need to be to carry the burden of being called an independent movie or a low budget movie or anything. It's a movie and the next question is how important is it? How good is it? Does it does it deserve to be promoted? Does it deserve to have an audience? I don't set about putting some stigma on my own work you know I don't think well I'm making a low budget movie now I might know it in my own mind but to me it, it's something that I want to make and it deserves to be made and it gets my full attention and full effort all the way are you selective on works if someone would be approaching you when it comes to the indie if they ask you to work on their project as far as screenwriting well I have to think that it deserves to be made or it's going to be good and has creators behind it that have the right attitude have the talent to do a good job of that I need to know. I'm not going to just do trash. And I need to get paid pretty well or well enough. If I like it enough, maybe I don't need to get paid. You know, all kinds of projects are different. There are some things you might want to do on spec or you might think somebody deserves some help or whatever and it's not too much trouble to give them a day's worth of my time. You know, do a cameo or something. Now, screenwriters commonly always have good ideas and there's always bad ideas. But their story adding for presentation, do you think there's such thing as a good idea into a bad idea or give your own definition between how a good idea in screenwriting and the story process can easily be a bad idea as presenting to other companies or other projects and so forth well I guess in a certain sense a bad idea is one that just won't sell and nobody's interested in so then it's, then it's bad it might be a good idea artistically but nobody's going to want it nobody's going to market it nobody's going to promote it it has to have a commercial value no matter what kind of idea it is or it's not going any place. You know, if you write a book, it takes a ream of paper and a computer or a pencil or whatever you're going to write it with, a typewriter, if you're old-fashioned enough to do it that way. But when you make a movie, it's going to cost quite a bit of money and nobody, it's not a party favor. It's something that has to get out there and perform or else you're not going to be making another movie. That's just the hard fact of it. Sometimes they have bad ideas, but they try to put it off as a good idea, and they put it out there, and sometimes by accident, well, it becomes good. Well, there's rip off articles, artists, and there's hacks, and there are charlatans, and the business is full of them. So avoiding the hacks of the charlatans, the rip off artists, that's one of the problems. That's one of the career problems that you're always going to face. Now, if someone does have a, a decent career, let's say a couple years, where would you still say that there's still a lot more to be learned? Even today, we got all this technology all this other stuff but yet do you think sometimes using the old old methods is really the the better build up to really shape up something that you need to get out there every production is a law unto itself the method of production has to be in tune with the kind of project that it is and so it can be done any number of ways digital is cheaper and easier now than it used to be it used to be you needed a hundred hundred and fifty thousand bucks to make any kind of movie now you can i can make a full-length feature for five grand or less and it can be a good one. You have to tune whatever you're doing to the equipment and the and the me and the staff that you have, and you have to do a good job of that, which we did with Night of the Living Dead, obviously, and I try to do with all of my movies. You don't have to be stereotyped into one thing or another. It's up to your own creativity, your own knowledge, and your own skill with the equipment you have, all the assets you have. If you can't do that, then get out of the business. If you're a screenwriter yourself, like purely a screenwriter, like does that as same thing rules apply to that as well? Or do, Because you can be stereotyped in that too, just writing this particular thing, written this and this is of the same thing. Are you talking about being pigeonholed? Yes. Well, that's always, so that's a battle that you always fight, you know. I'm just reading uh, Bobby Darren's bio 
autobiography by his son Dodd, and he talks about Bobby coming out and having a rock and roll hit with Splish Splash and some other things, and he wanted to move on and do uh, Frank Sinatra type music, and nobody wanted him to do that, but he wanted to do it. He did uh, Mac the Knife and Bang. His career took off big in, you know, in, in every way. You have to have the courage of your convictions, and a lot of times you're going to fall on your ass because nobody's going to believe in it. You know, the world's out there to do you in, really. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the world's out there waiting to kill you, make fun of you, embarrass you, call you names, and give you bad reviews and everything else. So you're the one that has to believe in yourself and fight all of that and somehow succeed. You yourself have obviously been a part of something that became such a, a very well-known and called classic like Night of the Dead. And there's dozens upon dozens of zombie films since that time. Do you feel it, it's really about adaptation than captivation in today's zombie type of films? Because they're always hyped up and they always got expensive budgets and so forth. I mean, how do you feel like when all these are just like, just basically uh, parading all these films, but, but like there was a little bit of a difference between when Nightly Dead. Well, I always say, you know, if you can come up with a good idea and execute it well, more power to you. We started the whole thing, came up with some original ideas that, that captured the whole world's attention, really. And Night of the Living Dead is still going on. It's a law unto itself, but other people have come on the scene and some of them have done some unique things and they deserve all the success that they're getting. You know, Sam Raimi did Evil Dead and I thought it was really good. Dan Urbana did a great job with his rewrite and his direction of Return of the Living Dead. Walking Dead, they ripped us off totally in the beginning. I mean, those guys were doing comic books. I knew them back when they had a table at the conventions and they were selling comic books and the story that they came up with for their comic books was really a total rip off of Night of the Living Dead. So then later they get big money and they do Walking Dead as a series and you know and it has a lot of money in it and it took off so that's the luck of the draw what would you say would be more successful it's like is, is it because of what was done the process or is it because it's the now type thing because unfortunately in today's society with these films like the zombie films are most mostly like it's more cartoony it's more hyped up and all this stuff I mean it doesn't have value when your definition what would you consider as value when it comes to the process of making these types of films and making them successful like that. I mean, the, the value is does it entertain people or does it educate them or does it uplift the society in any way? How important is it? You know, can the world get along without it? Is it a piece of trash or is it, is it a piece of work, a, a work of art? Those questions are always and forever. You can't nail it down with a hard, fast definition because by nailing it down, it, it's just going to take the life out of it. It depends on the artist and hopefully the person doing this is an artist and not just a hack. There are a lot of hacks and imitators that have successful careers and make a lot of money. It all depends on what gets promoted. And the public can be fooled. <laughs> I mean, in France, they thought Jer Jerry Lewis was a genius. You know, I thought he was a, a clown. I wasn't interested in his work at all. But he became a genius in his own mind. Go ahead and plug in anything that you would like to promote, anything I did, anything that you, any websites or anything, or even give advice that you would care to give to other well, screenwriters. My, my new novels, there are about 10 of them that I would consider new that have been published over the last year or two, and they're available through wolfpackpublishing.com, wolfpackpublishing.com. And then my friend Gary Lee Vincent has Burning Ball Publishing. We do work together on movies and books and so on. Doing, uh, we're shooting now uh, Crack. Coon. It's a sort of a satire and a lampoon of the, of the cocaine bear, you know, that movie. You can look for some of my movies and books, a lot of them really, on burningballpublishing.com. That's Gary's uh, website. And there you have it, everybody. That is screenwriter and author John A. Russo. Well, thanks a lot. Have a good day, everybody.